At this time, I invite Reverend Carl Cook, member of the Board of Veterans Affairs and a veteran, veteran of Operation Desert Storm, to lead the invocation. Today, in preview of November 11th Veterans Day, we gather to honor the service of every military member, both living and dead, those who served in combat and those who served in domestic safety, those who served willingly and those who served most reluctantly. Every military member's service has contributed a measure to the security and greatness these United States. We also honor the families of each military member, for grandparents and parents, siblings and extended families, for spouses and children, for neighbors and friends, all who supported or who support now the military members' service to our country. In particular today, we honor all those who served during the Vietnam era, a most challenging time in our country's history. Many Christian faith traditions believe that chapter 53 in the book of Isaiah is a prophecy of the one Christians believe to be the Messiah Savior. One description from Isaiah 53 proclaims, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we respected him not. Many of those who served during the Vietnam era may well identify with such a description. The social media and many prominent public figures castigated those who served and cast aspersions on their character, their motives, and their honor. Many Vietnam-era veterans have borne the wounds of battle and rejection, and healing has been very slow. Today, in this ceremony, acknowledging the service of especially those who served during the Vietnam era, is meant to offer a ball of healing and a measure of overdue honor. May I therefore offer this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, I believe that it has been your grace and providence that this nation, the United States of America, 
was established and allowed to grow in power, influence, and prominence. You brought together people from every corner of the world to establish the rule of law, governance by the people, and mutual protection of acquired freedoms. You caused to rise within many citizens the power of patriotism and the willingness to stand, to take up arms, to protect the principles on, upon which this country was founded. For every man and woman who has ever served in the military of these United States, in times of war and in times of peace, whether deployed to foreign lands or remaining stateside, on the ground, on the water, or in the air, those active in combat and those who provide supportive services. For every one of them, I give you thanks for their patriotism, for their service, for their measure of sacrifice. I pray that you would touch each military member, past or present, with the dignity, honor, and self-worth that is commensurate with their service. I also thank you for the support given to all military members by their families, friends, and neighbors. Especially today, Lord God, do I thank you for all those who served during the Vietnam era. Help each one to forgive the hurts and to consider their service with honor. Gracious God, I believe Jesus demonstrated the necessity of self-sacrifice for the benefit of others as he gave himself into suffering to provide for eternal security and peace. For all those who serve in the midst of potential danger, so that we may live in current and future security and peace, and for the benefit of all, I pray the multitude of your blessings on all who have or are serving in the military, including your protective care and your sustaining power. Grant to each military member an appropriate measure of self-worth, dignity, and honor. In the name of the one who served on behalf of all, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you, Reverend.